I'm Tyler Suters in the Energy News Center. In the last week of February, the program 60 Minutes introduced the nation and maybe the world as well to the idea of stationary fuel cells, particularly here, the bloom box. Rest assured, the bloom box is by no means the only game in town right now. And here to talk about what else is on the market is Dan Berdar. He is CEO of Fuel Cell Energy. This is a company that develops and manufactures stationary fuel cell power plants. Dan, it's great to have you with us. Thanks, Tyler. Good to Let's be here. start with the bloom box because it's such an easy jumping off point, an introduction to stationary fuel cells for the entire country, as I said. Um, a good look at what you do and what your field is about? Well, I think it's good in that it raises the visibility. And it raises the visibility not just to fuel cells, but there's a real demand in the marketplace for clean generation that runs on a continuous basis. And that's what a fuel cell does. Uh, what about the attention the Bloom Box is getting right now? Uh, a top-rated news program, high-profile financial support from Google, uh, high-profile leadership with someone like Colin Powell. That's not enough to corner a market necessarily. No, in fact, what it does is it raises the visibility of the market itself because the market that's addressable for stationary fuel cells is very large and it's only just beginning to be penetrated. So having another player in that space who's pushing product out there really helps in, just in terms of the overall marketplace and recognition. Let's step down a little bit, Dan, and talk about exactly what applications you see for your division mm -hmm. of stationary fuel cells. Our products are really designed for much larger applications. We're, we're looking into those industrial, commercial, and utility scale customers, typically size ranges that go anywhere from 300 kilowatts up to as large as 10, 20 megawatts. And you're telling me potential customers are things like hotels, universities, uh, the military obviously has strong interest in something like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. In fact, as the military looks at how they're going to protect themselves from disruptions of our grid, disruptions from our fuel infrastructure, fuel cells are the way they're going to be able to keep their facilities running in the event there are terrorist activities. Same with data centers, another great case where you have to be able to isolate yourself from the grid and keep running on a continuous basis. Let's talk about the issue of feedstocks. This sure. is not an emission-free generation source. It is significantly reduced in terms of the emissions versus traditional sources. Uh, natural gas is your primary feed. Yes, probably uh, more than half of what we do is natural gas based. We have a lot of units, particularly in California, about 40% of our installations there that run on a, a waste gas from some type of a biomass process, mm -hmm. like wastewater treatment, food and beverage processing. Our product's very fuel flexible. We actually have units that switch between natural gas and other fuels. So we're going to take advantage of whatever that existing infrastructure is. And our particular focus is natural gas because it's the cleanest, most abundant resource we've got. Now, on that note, you're here in Washington right now, obviously talking policy with, mm -hmm. with federal leaders here in D.C. Uh, are you tied closely to natural gas and in terms of looking for similar policies, a lot of concentric circles in terms of what you want to see? We, we do, because we really think as part of our overall energy policy, we have to take what now appears to be a very abundant domestic resource and use it as efficiently as we can and as cleanly as we can. And fuel cells, particularly products in our size range, are the most efficient way to generate power, and they do it with virtually no emissions. Let's get back to fuel cell energy specifically, Dan, for a moment. Uh, operate in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. That's your home base. That's also where you own and operate a manufacturing plant. Correct. Uh, it must be a major advantage to be in this field and not have to outsource much, if or if anything. It is. It really allows you to have a lot of control over the product itself, control over its, co its quality, and particularly since there's so much focus on driving cost out of all these new technologies, the ability to do that quickly. And that's been a major focus of our company for the last several years. Is that enough to eliminate to some degree foreign competition for manufacturing? No, I think what you're going to see is there's a lot of investment going into stationary fuel cells all around the world because everybody recognizes there's a very large untapped market and that's going to drive a lot of continued investment from uh, some very large players in in the global marketplace. Uh, who's steering you down right now overseas? Uh, overseas we see Doosan, for example, in Korea spending very heavily uh, on our same technology. Mm -hmm. We've seen companies like Siemens in Europe, um, IHI in Japan. So there's a lot of interest, uh, a lot of money. So hopefully we're going to see a lot of companies out there helping to grow this marketplace. Dan, final question, and I expect an optimistic view from you on this, but five years down the road, how many fuel cells will you have in operation or how prevalent will they be, not just from fuel cell energy, but from the industry as a whole? I think what you're going to see is a growing recognition that the way to solve a lot of our energy and environmental issues 
and solve the transmission problems that we have is to do it with clean distributed generation. And fuel cells actually enable that because you can cite them anywhere because of their emissions profile and their efficiency. So I think you're going to see fuel cells over time increasingly becoming the preferred solution for anybody that wants to put power at their own facility. I wonder if the people at FERC next door to us are applauding right now, <laughs> hearing uh, an absence of citing issues. Dan Bernard is CEO of Fuel Cell Energy based in Connecticut. Dan, thanks for being with us Thanks today. for having me. And we appreciate you joining us as well. I'm Tyler Suters. You're watching Clean Skies News.